Hello, welcome to the Friday Night Fount, uh, a ministry of Springs Life Church. My name is John Pethel. I serve at Springs Life Church, and um, Springs Life Church is a uh, Seventh Day Sabbath keeping church affiliated with Seventh Day Baptists. And uh, what that means is that we keep um, the Sabbath from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Uh, that's how we reckon it, just like the Bible would as. Uh, the Sabbath of God, the day that was blessed, the day that was sanctified, the day that we uh, find blessing in. And so we, uh, as part of that practice, we, we use that as a day of rest and a day of worship and a day of reflection. And um, Seventh-day Baptists are our uh, 350-year-old uh, organization uh, that uh, has been observing a Seventh-day Sabbath here in North America uh for for all that time and um we we hold typical baptist distinctives in addition uh to that seventh day as well too so uh being here 350 years old we we tend to have that uh position um uh held way before others uh, might have held that position and so um if you're watching this and you're not a seventh day sabbath keeper that's okay too um, the, the, the idea of Sabbath is, is certainly there in the Bible. It's in the Ten Commandments. Uh, resting uh, and putting our trust in God uh, is certainly part of what we do. Um, but let me consider inviting you um, to, to consider uh, possibly taking a look at that in Scripture, uh, seeing if uh, you want to take advantage of that rest. And so uh, I'm going to pray a, a prayer for us give us a little reflection on, on what we should do, because as this is Friday night, we are coming into that Sabbath. We are entering into it. And so um, we are entering into that blessing, uh, entering into our foretaste of heaven. And so I um, want to do that. The thing that I have been reminded this week coming into the Sabbath is just how, how powerful God is, that, uh, that God is uh, he's omnipotent, all-powerful. He is omniscient, all-knowing. He is omnipresent, which means that he can be everywhere at once. Uh, he is not limited like we are. And so sometimes we try to put our limitations on uh, God, but he is not held or constricted by our limitations. Um, the Sabbath is a place in which we uh, can rest on the power of God. So he created the world in six days, and he rested from that work of creation on the seventh, uh, but he continued his work of sustaining. Uh, but he made it for us. So we don't have to continue our work on the seventh day. We can rest. God will continue to uphold the world. Uh, God will continue to sustain it. Uh, God's power uh, is so amazing uh, that he doesn't even need us for a day that um, we can put all of our stuff down, that we're just really, uh, uh, we're not so important that we can't take care of ourselves, that we can't take care of our families, and that we can't take care of our spiritual lives. And so that's what I want to invite you into this Sabbath day, um, to, to just reflect on his power. Um, we are continuing our series in justice, and so we're going to have a devotion uh, from that. We're going to sing a few songs and uh, pray a little. And I hope that you are blessed uh, by, the, by the, the, the Friday night fount, uh, the fount that leads us into uh, the Springs Life, our, our church, our church's name, our, our Sabbath worship together. If you want to know more about Springs Life Church, uh, feel free to, to look at springslifechurch.org. Um, that, uh, that website needs to be updated, but there's information there. Or seventhdaybaptist.org. Or you can give us a phone call, 719-548-1098. Let me pray. Father, thank you, for, uh, thank you for knowing that we would need rest. Thank you for knowing that we would need your care. Thank you for knowing that we would need your power, because really we're just not all that powerful. And so we are thankful for the fact that we could put down our stuff today, that we can um, look into this evening and tomorrow and, and know that you have it under control, that we can trust in you, and that, Lord, uh, if we're paying attention, that you can give us a little foretaste of what heaven will be like, that, that we can experience renewal uh, on a level that we never have, that maybe 
God, you could provide us a, a break uh, from the day-to-day -day monotony that comes and, and show us something special. And so, Lord, uh, we want to thank you uh, for thinking about us. We want to thank you for the fact that, uh, that uh, if we had to work to earn your favor, uh, not only could we never do it, but we would have to work so hard. And so we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for uh, the fact that you have uh, given him uh, to us, that we could place our faith in him, uh, that we could find our rest in him, Lord, that we find our salvation in him, and Lord, that we will find our redemption in him. So I pray for this world, Lord. I pray for these people who are watching, Lord, that you might be their rest, that you might be their salvation, that you might be their redemption. Lord, if only they would trust in you. Help us to trust in you. Amen.
Yes, no turning back if we decide to follow Jesus. So to today's devotion uh, uh, in our series on justice uh, during this month of June in 2020 is uh, the fact that justice is satisfied in another, and that another is Jesus Christ. So, so we'll read uh, the, the verses uh, that, are, uh, that kind of encourage this devotion, Romans 8, verses 3 and 4. We'll read them uh, at the end of our devotion um, as part of the living water uh, from the fount. Um, but um, we do know that justice is satisfied in another, that we can't satisfy God's justice. Um, Lord, that we need his mercy, that we need his grace, and that Jesus was able to satisfy on the cross. So uh, I think divine forgiveness is, is truly marvelous. And we magnify the excellencies of God's mercy when we think on our sin and what we deserve as fallen creatures in Adam. But if we're not careful, we might miss the most amazing thing about the Lord's forgiveness of his people in Christ. What seems to amaze the biblical authors the most about divine forgiveness is not that God forgives, but rather the most amazing thing for writers such as Paul is that the Lord forgives without ignoring sin and compromising his justice. Romans is an amazing book, and Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26 is a key text in this regard that the Lord forgives without ignoring his sin, or without ignoring our sin, sorry, and compromising his justice. After expounding on the righteousness of God in Christ and the Savior's satisfaction of his Father's wrath for his people, the Apostle Paul writes that the cross happened so that God might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. That God might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. That's 326 in the book of Romans. Paul understood that it's essential for the Lord never to sacrifice his holiness in order to give forgiveness. If such were to happen, God would no longer be God. But in Jesus, our, our, our creator, our God, provided a way to show mercy without doing away with justice. He remains just and yet declares his people righteous, maintaining his mercy and his righteousness. The Heidelberg Catechism uh, in uh, question and answer 12 says that, because God is just, he will satisfy the claims of his justice. And there are two ways that this can happen. Either justice will be paid by the actual sinner who transgresses God's will, or it will be paid in full by another who stands in the sinner's place and receives the punishment that the sinner deserves. If we do not trust Jesus, to satisfy God's justice for us, then we will have to endure the full brunt of the Father's wrath ourselves. So there's two ways that God's justice can be paid. Either we pay it, or we place our faith in another, Jesus Christ, who pays it. So we will read in our passage that the Father sent his Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, and condemned sin in Jesus' flesh. When the Lord forgives us in Jesus Christ, he does not throw the just demands of his law out the window. Instead, he meets them in Christ. He shows us mercy, and he satisfies his perfect justice at the same time, leading us to stand in awe and to marvel at his divine forgiveness. We who serve Jesus Christ, have a true, if only partial, understanding of God's greatness. For we see him as he is, a being of infinite mercy and of infinite holiness. The hymn, Jesus, Thy Blood and Righteousness, reminds us that for every believer in Jesus, his blood, a full atonement made. We can trust the Lord because he is just and he always fulfills his promises. Even his promise 
to save us from the wrath of God. And we know he fulfills his promises because in Jesus, God's wrath was poured out and forgiveness was granted. Truly, he is a great, trustworthy God, a powerful God who's worthy of our worship, who's worthy of our affection, and who's worthy of our loyalty. God's justice satisfied in another. His name is Jesus. Let's read our living water from the fount uh, for today. Romans 8, 3 and 4. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit."
blessing is for us to be sent out to do justice to love mercy to walk humbly with our god may we think about that in the midst of injustice in this world let's pray lord you give us the unwavering call to do justice you tell us to defend the cause of the fatherless and the widow to love the foreigner residing among us, to provide for the hungry, the thirsty, and the naked, to love our enemy. But Lord, it is an overwhelming task because there is so much injustice in this world. Don't you know, God, that we are only human? Lord, that's why we need your spirit to fill us, to fill us with your power, to fill us with your love and your mercy, to fill us uh, with your righteousness, and maybe most importantly, to fill us with hope uh, in the midst of injustice. Remind us, Lord, that you love us, and that, that there is one who has satisfied you, that Jesus Christ, so that in all things we will follow your will, and that we can take up the call to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, God. Thank you. May we be able to do that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Join us again next week uh, for another Friday Night Fount, 7.30 p.m. on the Springs Life Church Facebook page, or uh, you can go to YouTube and Google Springs Life Church, and um, our archives of the Friday Night Fount will be there as well, too. I pray you guys have a wonderful Sabbath.